my veins I've been driving this train Years in this lane There's no stop in this flame Cause I came to the game And I changed it to play How I like rearranged it to my own domain Yeah, I got what it takes Made lots of mistakes Taking shots, skipping breaks Feeling lost hey everybody, welcome back to the channel uh, As you saw in the title Today we are going to be working on our EFI conversion For our magnesium blower manifold We did talk about this in the previous video When we were talking about making our injector bunks that we're going to be using. Today we're actually going to be machining the intake manifold. Um, we did have a couple of questions real quick uh, about our bungs that we were making before, asking about we were just drilling holes and it wasn't just a regular drill. I wanted to show you guys, this is a drill bit that is able to be purchased and it does have different steps in there to make sure that everything is correct for your sizes. This is available online. It's about 80 to you know 90, uh, depending on where you're getting it. I saw some up at about 130. It just depends on who's making it and uh, what you need. Kind of also what you're going to be drilling into as well. So um, it wasn't just a regular drill. It was a stepped bit and uh, everything correct for that. So make sure you guys like, subscribe, and do all of that stuff. Um, and let's go over what the process is going to be for machining this intake manifold. Okay, so over here with the manifold, the process that we're going to be doing to machine this. Well, first we're going to be taking all of our center holes that we had before that we were using, and we are going to put plugs in those. We're going to use 8th inch NPT aluminum plugs. Uh, that way, if our holes come into that, that'll actually be part of everything, and uh, it'll actually hold everything in place, and we won't have any leaks. Um, on top of that, uh, we're going to be going through um, with a 9 16 end mill, uh, and we will be milling our holes through the intake manifold where we need it to be. So we will machine with a 9 16 end mill, and then once the hole is put through, you're going to use our 3 8 NPT tap. This is a brand new tap, and we've marked where we're going to be roughly stopping with this. Uh, so we're going to come across, drill the hole, we're going to change out the collets, tap it, change back to our end mill, and then go to the next hole. So we're going to drill, tap, next hole, drill, tap, next hole, and then we have 16 of them. Uh, once we're done with the intake manifold, we will be setting everything up with our drill bit we were just talking about, and machining the same distance on our fuel rail, so that way everything will go on nice and smooth onto here. So after we have all the plugs in and everything ready over here, we're going to get this set up on the mill. Um, what we're going to do is I've already kind of checked where everything needs to be front to rear so that way we can go Make sure we're going to hit all of the areas we need to, side to side. And then also going front to back so that way we have room to make sure that uh, we're going to get the holes in the correct placement. Now the first step is going to be get this to come up like that. And then we're going to have to mount it um, and fasten it so it doesn't move and it can stay up like this. After that, once we have our angle up here that is going to be close, which is going to be about 45 degrees, um, we're going to have to make our adjustments for our injector angle here, and we're going to actually just use some shim stock underneath, and then we'll also have supports that are coming up right underneath here that we can use to push against it as well and get that angle where we want it to be as well. Now, with the intake up and supported, we have it clamped here. Um, we're going to be taking a little bit of time on this uh, to make sure everything is right. We're going to drop our end mill out use our dial indicator that we have here, and we're going to indicate in on the edge here to make sure that it is square. At the same time, we need to set our angle because if we get it square here and loosen everything up on the other side to start putting any shim stock in or anything like that, we could lose our zero. So it's gonna be kind of a uh, doing two things at once and trying to get everything correct, but we're gonna go ahead and get that angle correct um, on the backside get it a little bit tipped over where we want it, and then also get everything squared side to side so that way all of our injectors are in a nice straight line and we don't have an intake rail that's going back and forth like this.
Okay, so we're going to the hand cam here. Um, we've got everything zeroed. So uh, the angle that we put here ended up being 41 and a half degrees. So we rolled it over from 40, it was 45 uh, degrees on here. So we rolled it over three and a half degrees uh, because this here, this pad, is not the same angle as everything else. It's already kind of rolled over, so that should give us around a uh, seven to eight degree layover. Now, issue we just ran into, and this is your adapt and overcome on there. Um, when we rolled the intake manifold over like this, the edge here got closer to the mill. Um, so where we were planning to put the injector down here, you can see where we machined it out like this, uh, is not going to work. So I've done the math here. We're going to go over everything on this in just a moment, but uh, this is actually, or the injectors are actually going to have to come up a little bit higher. Not a bad thing on there, but uh, not what we had planned. So you'll see this is going to come down right about there. We may have to come back in here and relieve that um, because of the tap, but we'll find out. You can see it's just barely, just barely machining or, or scraping right there. Um, we'll find out exactly what we have to do. And it may be something that after we get all of the uh, holes done and everything on there, if it's too close, we can put it back up in here and relieve those afterwards. Um, I'm probably going to do that anyways because I don't like the look of it being offset like that. So we'll machine it all the way up. But that is the, uh, the adapt overcome kind of the stuff we have to do when we're making these custom pieces like this. So let's go ahead. I'm going to show you guys some of the math of the injector spacing and uh, get to punching holes. So back to the hand cam. So we this right here is going to be our manifold this is the edge right here and the edge here we've got our eight injectors here we're basing everything off of the outside edge of the manifold here so we can touch off there and find our zero and it's going to come over have an injector over have an injector over two per cylinder that way so when we set this up we measured everything we know the size of our injector bodies and everything so it's going to come over 625 thousandths and then we're going to have one in there. At two inches in, we're going to have another here. At 5.425 inches, and then at 6.8 inches, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when you're machining, it's a lot nicer to know how much you're gonna be moving. So, up here, we have the travel distance and the corresponding hole, all right? So, number one, your corresponding hole, 625 is the travel distance from zero. Then you're going to move 137 or 1.375 inches and that's the corresponding hole number two which is two inches right there so that's how we're going to be able to keep track of everything we're doing and we know what all of the you know moving distance is going to be so to find our edge we were just talking about right here we're going to um you can see there's a tiny little just scratch right here just right there um we know this is a 9 16 end mill all right and that's a machined end mill so you can do your math on that and that is 0.5625 in the diameter so we brought it in slowly until it just barely kissed that right there and then we can divide that by two move over that much and that's going to put this exactly on center all right and that's going to give us exactly zero um, that that distance if you're curious is 0.28125 so we moved over um, we just kind of rounded it down and went 0.281 all right that put us at zero now we move over our um, 625 thousandths and that's going to put us right here for our first hole so, by the way uh, if you can't tell I am extremely nervous about this I have never done one of these uh, this is like obviously my own idea on this and it being a magnesium manifold if something messes up, I can't really weld it up and, you know, fix it on there. So there's like a zero margin of error on this. Um, we have to have everything exactly right the first time. So, yeah, if you guys hear uh, me a little bit of quiver in my voice or something, that's because I am nervous on this uh, because to try to find another one of these manifolds, it's going to be more money and everything like that. So um, we're going to take it slow, get this first one done. Once we have the first one done, then it should probably be fairly easy on there and we'll continue to just check all of our clamps and everything make sure everything is tight and uh, keep going but yeah just a little a little nervous okay
first hole punched, we're going to change it over and put our tap in and we will be tapping this by hand. We're going to be using an uh, adjustable wrench on this and our feed at the same time uh, until it starts and then we should be able to do this and it'll, we'll just give it a little bit and we'll tap it through. You're probably going to see me coming up and down to try to clear the chips out of it, but we're going to swap that over and get that done right now. Okay, so I did take, I have another tap. Um, this is a brand new tap that I got today, and this is one that I probably tapped maybe, I don't know, 10 holes with. This is a uh, pretty soft material, so I was just like, nope, I'm just gonna get a brand new one with this. Like I said, I was a little nervous. So I did take this, brought it up, and I did tap this down by hand a little bit more. Um, we, uh, looks like we will need to notch this out, which I kind of uh, was expecting because it's going to hit the hex that we have here. Um, it will need to be tapped down a little bit more, but right there, it, one more thread in the, the, uh, the hex of this is going to start hitting this, the wall there. So when we're done with this, we are gonna have to go ahead and machine that, but look at that. So far, the idea is working. Um, still has a ways to go down in there. Like I said, I know that we're gonna have to tap it a little bit further, um, but that's, I mean, the plan is working um, and I am I'm ecstatic right now I this is many many hours of, uh, of thinking and planning into this and first one working perfectly so now I'm gonna go ahead we're gonna do our math we have to move over to this one machine that and then it looks like what we're gonna be doing is starting the the tap and threads on the machine and then we'll finish uh, setting them uh, the depths when it's off of the machine uh, by hand and what we'll do on that, since all of these are the same height on here, um, we'll take a straight edge across all of them, put them on there, and then we can adjust each one so that way they're all the exact same height. Because when we machined them, we started at the same spot here, and then we had a stop, so they all went the exact same dif distance down. So they should all be exact. Okay, guys, uh, day number two on this. I've moved on to the second side to do the, uh, the other bank on this. Um, I didn't film all of the first side uh, on there, just took me a little bit of time and as I said, I was a little bit nervous, so I put the camera down and concentrated a whole bunch. I did change a couple of things that we're doing on this second bank, uh, so I wanna go ahead and show you what we changed and we're gonna go ahead and rifle through this. We're gonna then, after we're done, we're gonna mill a bunch of the uh, intake away to kind of clean everything up on it and um, kind of get everything ready to uh, then start on the rails. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do the rails in this video or do it in the next one because I should have our big injectors by then and maybe we'll do the rails and injectors and uh, kind of putting everything together with the surprise top piece that we're uh, working on. So let's go ahead behind me, take a look at what we changed and uh, why we're changing it. So as I said before, uh, we weren't able to come out where we were originally planning and everything is gonna be a little bit higher up and we don't have it notched. Let's lean in there. We don't have it notched where it needs to be. So I added one more step where we're taking a three quarter inch end mill and we're coming down and we're just spot facing everything. You can see right here, we're cleaning up just those little bits. Uh, it makes the tapping a lot easier. Also, I changed the, uh, the steady rests. Uh, they were moving right in here with these uh, on here. I have jam nuts on everything underneath, but I didn't have this and there was still a little bit of play. So on the first one, I kept having to grab these and do this and just make sure that they were still touching. After I've done this, I haven't really had to touch them at all, but I still check them after um, every two, after every runner I check these, and in between each hole, I go and I check the sides and make sure that nothing is uh, wiggling or doing any loosening on that.
Cool. So you saw that uh, we kind of walked you through what the whole process is on that. Um, we've got everything kind of done. Well, I shouldn't say we do, uh, kind of. We have all 16 injector uh, bungs already machined as you saw in our previous video. And now we have everything drilled and tapped. But this intake isn't the prettiest. You know, it's, it's an old cast deal from uh, back in like the 80s or something. So um, now is when I'm going to have some fun. We're going to do a bunch of freehand on here. I'm going to go through and I'm going to clean up these rails because this is what we were kind of zeroing everything off of. Well, we don't need those anymore. We've got everything drilled. So let's go ahead. I'm going to clean this up. We're going to make this look like an actual intake manifold probably should. Uh, this is kind of some fun stuff because, like I said, it's freehand. We're just going to go through it and whatever looks good, we're going to go ahead and mill it all off and make it good. So. There you have it. As you see, we went through, cleaned everything up, and that is the process for doing an EFI conversion on a cast style manifold. Obviously, uh, it being threaded bungs and everything specific to our magnesium intake, but that I know of, I believe we have the only magnesium EFI intake that's out there. If you guys know of another one, drop a comment below. Uh, we went through, cleaned all of this up. You can definitely see uh, how bad some of those castings were and everything from the uh, 70s and 80s but this is going to work pretty well for us um, i just ordered the 800 uh, pound an hour afis injectors this morning so we should be having those come in in the next week and uh, we will go ahead and get all of these set at the same heights through here and also take and machine our fuel rails to match we're going to go ahead and just verify all of everything here for all of our measurements and uh, make sure we don't need to make any adjustments but i think it turned out pretty good it was a pretty big project for myself to take on uh, but i'm really glad that i did do it uh, in-house instead of sending it out now the dollars and cents on this uh, i had a couple of estimates done to have an intake manifold built for our engine uh, i had like a big custom sheet metal deal and that was around six to seven thousand dollars um, in materials and everything for this got much less but we also used a mill in all of our parts here and tooling um, in the uh, the tooling in the mill and everything I actually picked this up fairly inexpensive for about 1800 bucks and uh, the tooling and uh, measuring devices things like that that I have into it probably have another maybe two thousand dollars so uh, I had four grand into this but now I can do things like this versus six or seven thousand into an intake manifold um, we also still have the top hat you guys haven't seen yet here, but I think I only have another few hundred dollars into that. So we're still money ahead. Um, I don't talk about the dollars and cents too much, but if you guys want some more in-depth videos of like the process of some of the machining and things like this, let me know in a comment below. Uh, make sure that uh, you like and subscribe. Uh, please visit the website uh, www.badinfluencegarage.com. We've got shirts and uh, things on, uh, up for sale on there. All of that does go right back into the race car, so we do appreciate that and the entire race program. Um, and until next time, guys, be safe out there. Ice in my veins, I've been driving this train. Years in this lane, there's no stop in this flame. Cause I came to the game and I changed it to play. How I like rearranged it to my own domain. Yeah, I got what it takes, made lots of mistakes. Taking shots, skipping breaks, feeling lost. Feeling